Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at Flow Lab, a visual game engine. It's actually quite fun to play with if you are looking for something a little bit more casual, or you're looking to um, introduce someone else to the world of game development, perhaps a teacher in a classroom environment. Flow Lab is a very interesting project. If you want to check it out, it is available at flowlab.com. IO. As you can see, we are running this in my browser, but do not let that turn you off. It is a very complete game engine. In fact, all of the tooling you need is included right there. So if you want to go ahead and check out Flow Lab, the easiest way to probably do so is to come on at flowlab.io, go to games, and pick one of the existing games here. So you, by the way, you can start this completely from scratch. There is a free tier. We'll get to what the tiers include in just a bit. Uh, but what you're doing right now, what everything you're going to see today is using the free tier. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check out Thrall. Now, I've actually already got it loaded up. Uh, I have right now the tab turned off for volume. Let's turn it back on. So here you can see this is the game. Uh, very simple in nature. We go ahead and click play. You do have the ability, obviously, to create splash screens, um, scrolling stories, title screens, play music, synchronize things up. We'll skip that out and we'll get into the game itself. All right, so here we are. We are now playing the Thrall game. Um, you've got multiple different levels, scrolls off the side. You've got health bars. Um, you've got uh, simple character control. So for example, I can move things around right here. So this is the kind of game that you can create quite easily with Flow, Flow Lab. Now what you do, if you wanna go ahead and actually check the game engine out yourself, you hit the escape key. And what it does is it brings you into basically editor mode. So let me just zoom in that slightly so you can see. All right, here we go. Um, so here is our game world. We can go ahead and load up and we have multiple different levels. So you saw we transitioned between the, the intro screen and the tutorial is what we were in right now. I'm gonna load the, the main game level. So we'll load that one up right there. So you see here, it scrolls kind of infinitely off to the side. Now, one thing you're gonna find when you're using these demo examples, um, saving is locked out. So this is more of an exploring how the process works. Um, what you're gonna find, there is a decent amount of tools here. We've got the ability to place things in the world, like this tree right there was placed that way. All of the assets, as you mouse over them, uh, you, you see the, the selection statements come in place. We've got foreground options. You do have standard Z ordering here. You also have the ability to have multiple different layers. So you can have a user interface layer, like this guy. You also have a background layer, like that. Um, and we're going to focus more on the game world layer in this case. So you see you got your main character down here. Well, this is how things work in Flow Lab. And the nice thing, the thing I really like with Flow Lab is, once again, it is an all-in-one tool. So if you are looking to learn game development, you don't have to go and figure out a tool for creating your sprites or for your animations or anything else. They're all here and all together. So I'm going to grab this guy, and we're going to right-click on this character and we're gonna go edit. So here we see you got a couple of different options here. You can drill down here and control the physics of an object. Uh, by the way, this tripped me up a number of times, pun not intended. You do have to come in and click movable to make it so that the sprite can move, even if you're not actually using physics. Um, so you set up which direction to go, the collision shapes to work with, does it have gravity, how much does it balance, and so on. So configuring physics is quite simple and straightforward. And then you notice over here we have our sprite editor. Also, this is your Z ordering right here. So this determines uh, what draws in front of something and what draws behind it. Uh, you also have multiplayer settings over here. You can parent something to another object. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this sprite. So this is what you're going to understand in terms of the tooling available. We have a full-blown sprite editor here. You can see a preview of it up there. Uh, you've got a typical fat pixel grid style editing machine. You've got the ability to do uh, flipping things. You've got tools for you know erasing, flood fill, creating lines, text, and so on. Um, you can snap to the grid or not. You can have pixel perfect mode or not. And you basically just draw your character this way. You also have palette control over here. So you can see we're using, it looks like a Sega 32 color palette, but there's a number of different, um, so, you know, between 4-bit and 30, and I guess that's, sorry, uh, four color and 32 color uh, palettes uh, uh, options available there. You can also go ahead and upload your own. You can also download them as well. So if you're working with a fixed color palette, you have those options there. Another cool thing here is you also have a full-blown animation editor here. So go ahead, we can pick an animation for this guy. So it's various different attack options. You can see the frames there. You can drag and move them into different orders if you wish. You can add a new frame this way. You have onion skinning options. So you can see as you move between the frames, you can see the, the ghost of the previous frame. So all the tools you need to do uh, animation work are available here as well. 
Um, so I like that aspect of this. You don't need to hunt down other tools. They are all included here. Now, once you've actually got your sprites set up and created, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and add behaviors to those sprites. So behaviors is where the flow lab name comes from. I think it uses a flow chart type system. So you're going to open up this behavior and you see here, we have a number of different, uh, I forget the terminology they use for them, but basically different graphs available. So for example, if we wanted to see the graph for handling, uh, jumping animations, we can, oh, they call these bundles. Okay, so we can open up the bundle here, and this is the programming methodology of FlowLab. It's pretty straightforward to work with. So you can here you see when the A key, is, sorry, the up key is pressed, you can change the key by pressing right there. Uh, it goes into here, and then based off of, you know, uh, what the pressed setting was, it either starts the new animation, so it starts a new jump animation, and then here, once that animation is done playing, it plays back to the idle animation. Uh, at the same time, it also plays a sound effect to go along with that uh, movement. So you see here, you drill down, you got the ability to actually choose what the sound effect is, or you can upload your own, you can have it looping or not. We also have it sets the impulse so the character moves forward. Now you see we got other options here as well. So it's responding to uh, mailbox events. These are messages that could potentially come from other graphs. So it's a way of having a more elaborate communication. So here we see stop all player movement is sent. It will actually stop the player from moving. Over here, you've got um, start all player, power attack, all those various different options can come in from other graphs and you can respond to them there as well. You also could have an event that comes in in the form of a collision. And if that happens, then you go ahead and do this uh, physical impulsing here of minus six out as uh, the the way that this particular graph is going to resolve. So you can see over here, you have a number of different triggers. These are basically things that can start things off. So keyboard pressed or a mouse was clicked or a collision occurred, or you got a message. Again, this is the way that the various different graphs communicate with each other. Or you could say like uh, showed up on screen. So these are the things that happen. Or again, if you want something to just happen every frame, you can do it as an always. If you want to do something that happens when it's just first loaded, you can do it as a once. So these are the things that basically respond to events in your world. And then we've got nodes for logic. These are things like uh, numbers and expressions, random number generators, um, logic gating routers for moving things different ways or switches, as you can see in action right here. So this is the, the logic aspects of your game. Here you've got uh, various different components. So for example, the impulse component we see right here, but you could also spawn a new object or emit like a, um, a, like a bullet. If you're shooting, for example, you can destroy objects this way. You can point at things, control the camera, or like I said earlier on, everything is managed with messages. So you could actually uh, dispatch a message that other graphs could then handle. So this is how you tie all your spaghetti together. You can raycast things out. We've also got control over properties, such as what is my current position, uh, the color, and so on. We've got controls here for text and the UI layer as well. Uh, we've got some game flow things. These are top level events, like um, someone paused the game, loaded the game, a level change. Uh, you've got some very specific to mobile devices. Now, I think these are locked behind a paywall, uh, so the basic version isn't going to get this. Um, some multiplayer controls as well. Again, they're locked out right now. I'm not sure if they're not implemented or they're locked behind a paywall. I'm not 100% certain there. And then we've got some like pre-made bundles. So, for example, if you're working a ship combat game, I could literally create a ship control bundle like this, and now you're going to see this is kind of a predefined uh controller for, uh, I think it's inertia based ship movement. And so you can start with these bundles sort of as a, uh, prefab for certain kind of behaviors and movements. So that is the programming structure. There's behaviors right there. Uh, they can communicate with each other using that messaging system. You can have it, you know, does this happen on reset of the level or does it persist? or do you keep it between levels? So as you switch between levels, you can create more and more elaborate games. Another aspect of it is the library. And here's where you can use all of the various different uh, things you've implemented in your world. So if I wanted to go ahead and add um, a Yig Yak, I don't know what a Yig Yak is, but we can create a new Yig Yak from the library, simple enough. And I think it's, you know, here, I'll do B Ghost Chief. B Ghost Chief. Oh, now I click and I create. Uh, okay, so it's locked in this particular example, so I can't showcase that. It would be if you created your own project from scratch, you would be able to implement it that way. By the way, creating your own game is pretty simple. Back here to the homepage, uh, you will find you basically just click the start making games. 
uh, set up a few options here. Uh, in terms of export options, well, the free account does limit you to at most three games, by the way. Uh, you can export out for desktop, but also for iOS and Android. So your two major mobile platforms are handled as well. Um, but yeah, that, that basically, ladies and gentlemen, is FlowLab. It's definitely a simple process to work with. I like the way behaviors are set up. It's pretty intuitive on the whole. And here you can see the pricing structure for FlowLab itself. We do have a free tier. Uh, this uh, one user account, three games, maximum of 50 objects with no exporting. So really that is come on in and, and play around with the options that are available. Uh, at the indie tier, you're looking at $9 a month build monthly or $59 a year. That's where you're getting unlimited games and export your games. So for the majority of people, if you're going to go to a paying tier, uh, this is where you would be at. We also have uh, a teaching options for up to 35 student accounts if you're teaching um, at that price. And then if you've got an entire school, you want to be using this. Um, you've got at this tier, unlimited students, unlimited classes, and so on for teaching. Um, yeah. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. We got a breakdown of some of the various different options that are available here. I'm going to see if we've got multiplayer, if we scroll on down. So online multiplayer is version locked. So that's why we didn't see it in the free tier. You also have some limitations. You can't upload your own custom sounds or loading screens or so on. So you're not going to make a great game with the free tier by any means, but you are going to get an idea of most of the features and functionality there. And then in terms of pricing, you're looking at $9 a month. I don't know how that would compare with something like Construct 3. I think you're right around in the same tier for pricing, uh, but I would have to look that up. Uh, I'm always curious what you guys think of uh, the pricing of these types of games. The thing is, you do get, if you're going to commit for a year, you do save 50%, which is a pretty sizable savings. Uh, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is FlowLab. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, they actually do have a quite solid documentation available, which is always a nice thing. Walks you through everything you need to know for creating your game. And again, I like the fact that there is the sprite and animation editor in there. I do like when game engines do that. It's something uh, GDevelop does it as well. I think Construct has its own editors built in. Um, game Maker does as well. Those make those much more accessible to people just starting out. So I always appreciate when they take that approach. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Flow Lab, kind of fun to work with, uh, kind of geared towards the teaching for sure. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.